back with another one of my mystery videos. You guys seem to be really loving these and I'm loving the feedback so I want to keep continuing doing these for you guys. So let me know any cases you want me to do down below and I'll try and do them in future videos. I know I look the same as I did in last week's mystery video but I am travelling these next few weeks so I have... Uh, I'm planning on bolt filming just a couple videos now just so I know that I have them up for you guys because I don't want to miss any more Sunday uploads. So today we're going to be talking about the disappearance and the strange sightings following the disappearance of Bonnie Bickwit and Mitchell Weiser. I think that's how you say the names, I'm so sorry if I pronounced them wrong but if you've been watching any of my videos you know that I'm the worst at pronouncing names. So Bonita Bonnie Bickwit was 15 years old at the time of her disappearance and Mitchell Fred Weiser was 16. And on July 27th, 1973, they slipped away from camp together and they disappeared past that. No one knows where they went. So the pair of them were honor students and they both attended a really prestigious school. They went to John Dewey High. It's an academy in Brooklyn and it just specializes in um, students that were really intellectually gifted. So they were obviously the pair of them, very, very smart, very clever. And they went to this really prestigious high school. They were in a relationship and they considered their relationship to be serious enough that they actually exchanged wedding rings earlier that summer. Obviously this is hearsay, this has come from like friends and people that know them, but yeah, allegedly they had exchanged wedding rings because they were that sure of their relationship. On July 27th, 1973, Mitchell met up with Bonnie at the place she worked. He waited for her and she came off her shift at her usual workplace. From the sounds of it, I believed they, um, she continued to work there while they were at camp. I think it was just a nearby camp, so yeah. They were supposed to be at camp together and um, they met and from there they planned to hitchhike to this music festival. They were hoping to attend a festival called Summer Jam, an outdoor music festival in New York and their hitchhike journey would mean uh, a total of 156 miles of travel. It said they left with big backpacks, they left with sleeping bags, uh, food, things like that and approximately only about $25 between them in cash. A tracker came forward and said he picked them up and drove them part, like, part of the way and he actually dropped them off along Route 97 so he did part way of their journey. And then past this point, no one knows what happened to them. No one knows if they made it to the festival, no one knows where they went past this, so that's the story of their disappearance. During the investigation, they obviously considered family backgrounds, they considered anything that might give them, these two young teenagers, a reason to run away, because I think that would be a lot of people's initial reaction, that the pair of them just run away together because it does happen. But both of their families and parents insisted that they came from strong families, and the pair of them's families, they actually came from a very strong Jewish background. Written here, sources say that they both families were members of Brooklyn's Jewish communities of Borough Park and Midwood. So they had a very strong background, very support, very strong support network. So they don't believe they had any reason for them to run away. A pair of them were said to also be on track for um, college scholarships and strong careers because they were so gifted. Obviously they were these gifted young teenagers and they were said to have a bright future ahead of them. So no one really believes that they ran away. There was also no history of drug or any trouble or anything like that. Um, the pair of them, neither of them seem to have a travel pass, so once again, no reason for them to knowingly run away as people are adamant like that something had happened to them. However, when they dug deep in the investigation, friends said that Bonnie had allegedly had a recent bust up or an argument with her employers because she'd announced that summer that she was quitting and apparently this caused a bit of a scene, a bit of a kerfuffle, but um that's kind of all that came from it, all they could find. It's also said that she had appeared regularly quite upset about her home situation to her friends. Uh, she had a disabled father at home and apparently she became quite stressed and quite overwhelmed. And people said that she just broke down sometimes, so that's, again, hearsay, what their friends have said. So we don't know, sort of, to the extent of what this is true or, you know, young teenage drama. It's also said that Mitchell had become quite upset that he hadn't been on the right path. He'd been on the right path for good colleges but he hadn't made it into his dream college of choice. I don't know what it was but apparently he became quite stressed that this things weren't going exactly how he'd planned. When they'd heard this lead in the investigation both their families stressed that this isn't unusual, this is quite typical teenage stresses and they don't think that any of these would have led to a strong enough um, outburst that they would run away and 
not returned. Past this, uh, the case became even more complicated because it turns out that the local police actually lost quite important files. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, most important files that was lost, somehow misplaced, was um, a file containing the pair of the teenagers' only dental records, which if you guys know, if you follow any sort of investigation or anything, dental records are one of the main ways that you can identify a body if it's decomposed, if it's, you know, if it's been lost for a long time, it's one of the main ways to identify someone, to find out who they are, and their own dental records had been lost by the police department, which is a huge, huge deal, a huge issue, and I, I have no idea how something like that happens. Because of all this complication with the case, um, no real progress was made for quite a few years. In 2007, classmates of the young couple planted a tree and a memorial plaque at the high school in memory of them, and I think it just became quite, um, even though the case hadn't made any further discoveries, I think people just sort of began to assume that they were never going to return, that something had happened to them and they were lost. I think at some point um, over those years the case had been officially closed and because of all this memorial garden and everything um, it gained quite a lot of media coverage and it actually led to a governor of the area reopening the case. This got TV coverage it's got quite wide TV coverage and led to the discovery of a new lead, someone coming forward and providing a little bit more information because the case had gained a lot more attention so someone else came forward with some new information. A man from Rhode Island whose name was Alan Smith, he said a VW bus with Pennsylvania plates picked him up on his way back. Obviously it was a hitchhiking thing so he jumped there so they would take him home on part of his journey and he claimed that the young couple were actually on the bus. He then said at one point of the journey, because obviously it was quite a long journey, the bus pulled over so they could all cool off by a river. Smith said he saw Bonnie get swept away in this river by a current and Mitchell dived in after her. He said uh, people saw it, numerous people saw it and the bus driver saw it but everyone got back into the bus assuming that someone would alert authorities as soon as they could but he said that the bus driver never reported it. However, Smith couldn't identify either of them from photos and he couldn't describe anything to do with their appearance, what they were wearing, what they were carrying, nothing like that, so it, people started to question the reliability of his statement and he also refused to take a polygraph test. Obviously they still chose to investigate it because it was a new lead and they discovered absolutely no drowned bodies like reported in the area around that time, so this only sort of leaves more questions as to whether this was true, if it was and it wasn't the couple they were searching for, who was it? Like, there was loads of unanswered questions from this and it didn't in any way help the case of finding the truth behind Bonnie and Mitchell's disappearance. This is all there is on the case. Um, Bonnie would now be 59 and Mitchell would now be 60. So again, this is another one of those sort of really heartbreaking and really quite confusing cases where things have gone wrong and I, it's so unbelievable that two young teenagers could go missing without a trace and no one have absolutely any idea where they've gone no reasons why nothing and I just think that's absolutely insane yes once again like I always say let me know down below if you have any discussion points if there's any information that you know that I haven't covered if there's any theories any particular suspects anything like that then leave that in the comments because I love it when people sort of discuss the cases and also any new cases you'd like me to cover in future weeks videos and I will see you guys on Wednesday for another video bye